Our next talk is titled Camera Pose Autoencoders for Improving Pose Regression by Yoli Shavit and Yossi Keller. Hi everyone, um, so I'm Yoli Shavit from Bar Ilan University and today I'll be talking about camera pose autoencoders and how they can help in improving the performance of camera pose regressors. This is a joint work with Professor Yossi Kaler. So absolute camera pose regression aims to regress the camera pose parameters, X the position and Q the orientation directly from the query image. This is a simple, lightweight, fast scheme. You don't need to store or fetch the visual or spatial features of the scene. You don't need to know the query intrinsics, nothing. Just give the query image and you're on. But other localization methods achieve better accuracy. In this work, we asked ourselves, how can we introduce information about the scene, like the feature that I just mentioned, at a minimal cost, while maintaining the advantages of APRs in terms of simplicity, in terms of runtimes, in terms of memory cost? So for this purpose, we developed camera pose autoencoders, or PAEs. This is a means for introducing visual and spatial information at a small runtime and memory cost in order, again, to improve the, the performance of APRs. Similarly to neural radiance fields, we use Fourier features, NMLPs, to encode the camera pose into a high-dimensional latent space. PAEs are trained via student-teacher approach, using APRs as teachers. Okay, so given a latent representation of a query image generated with a pre-trained APR, the PE students learn to generate um, the same encoding but from the, the respective camera pose. This is achieved by optimizing the L2 loss between the two encodings and the camera pose loss when applying the teacher on the, on the pose encoding. We first wanted to check whether students can actually reproduce their teacher's performance. So we evaluated our uh, approach on the seven scenes and on the Cambridge uh, Landmark dataset. These are two datasets that uh, represent different localization challenges. Um, as a teacher, we use a recent state-of-the-art um, APR called MS Transformer. Um, and you see here the um, median poser, position, and orientation errors across different scenes. And indeed, the student PAE closely reproduces the performance of the teacher. We then asked, okay, let's see if this works across different teacher um, architectures. So here you can see uh, different APRs, okay, um, with different backbones. And again, the student reproduces the performance of the APR and can even overcome its master in some cases. Um, now, we first showed some example applications of how we can use PAEs to introduce uh, priors and improve the position estimation. For example, test time optimization or image decoding. Importantly, we propose a new localization class called Iterative Absolute Pose Regression, or IAPR. It combines absolute pose regression with PAE-based relative pose regression. So given a query image, we first apply the APR to get a pose estimate. Now we can use a PAE-based RPR to generate the, or compute the relative motion from the first estimate and the query, basically refining it iteratively. We implement the PAE-based RPR with a transformer encoder. So given an image, we first we apply a convolutional backbone, and then we do the same on the pose estimate, on some pose reference. We take these late, the resulting latent um, representation and aggregate them with a transformer encoder. Then we can apply MLPs and regress the delta uh, position and delta orientation. And this will fit into the iterative loop and refine the initial APR estimate. In this table, you, show, you see a comparison of IAPR with different localization methods. Now, different methods have different trade-offs. Structure-based methods um, achieve the best accuracy, but they usually require heavy mem memory-heavy inputs, visual, local and global visual features, 3D information, um, other uh, methods which remove these requirements still need the intrinsic 
and are trained per scene. So you need a model for each scene that you need to localize. Relative pose regression, regressors or RPRs, generalize to unseen scene and can be trained together on multiple scenes, but have a lower accuracy. And also they need the global encoding of the reference images. Finally, absolute pose regressors don't need anything. You just give them the query image and they can localize. But again, they suffer from a lower accuracy. Multi-scene pose regressors that were introduced in the past few years um, improve uh, accuracy and can also be trained on multiple scenes at once. Finally, our approach can also be trained on multiple scenes given a multi-scene teacher, but it also improves uh, the accuracy, as you can see here, uh, bolded. So it basically achieves a new state-of-the-art APR localization without introducing um, additional inputs um, just by using our trained PAE. One of the interesting things about our AI IPR approach is that it combines APR with RPR. Now, RPR, relative post regression, enjoys a much larger training set. From the same set of images, we can now train many, many pairs, generate many pairs and, and train on them. So we ask ourselves, can we reduce the acquisition load with our approach? In this table, you see um, the comparison between a recent state-of-the-art APR, MS Transformer, the one that we used for a teacher, when trained on 100%, 70%, 50%, and 30% of the data. And the same for our method, IAPR. As you can see, our method consistently um, outperforms MS Transformer, but importantly, it maintains um, the state-of-the-art performance even when trained with only 30% of the data. And this is, again, when taking a um, specific uh, manner of sampling, um, we can generate many, many more pairs than the one that we've actually used. So this can even potentially improve further. We further carried ablations on our method in terms of the um, number of layers in our transformer encoder. You remember we implemented our PAE-based RPR with a transformer, and on the number of iterations, we found that it's enough to even do one iteration to get state-of-the-art performance in terms of absolute pose regression. We also wanted to compare image-based and PAE-based RPR. So in image-based RPR, the traditional method, you feed in the query image and some reference image you took from a database, you fetch from a database, and compute the relative pose. In our method, you feed just the query image and um, a pose encoding, okay, so much less data. And as you can see, the, the results are, are quite similar, even though we were using much less information. So we introduced a novel teacher-student approach for learning to encode poses into appearance-robust informative latent representations. Just to remind you, our goal is to improve absolute pose regression at, at a minimal runtime and memory cost. I first showed you that our trained students can effectively reproduce the, the performance of their teacher, sorry. Um, and then I showed you some applications. The most important one is iterative absolute pose regression. It combines absolute pose regression with the learning of relative scene coordinates. Through that, we achieve a new state-of-the-art absolute pose regression on the seven scenes data set and show how we can maintain the state-of-the-art performance even in training on only 30% of the data. I invite you to check out our ECCV uh, paper that we presented just a few months ago um, and our code, um, IAPR, will see in archive and you can check it as well. Um, Thank you for listening. Thank you, Yoli. Any questions from the audience? Uh, meanwhile, I see there's still some people that just came in sitting on the stairs. So if you couldn't make your way to the other side, there's still seats available. We're, we need to keep this. Did you try to do it on special data, like medical images, that you can uh, have some kind of good initial guess what the what the encoder might be? Um, no, we're, we're mainly focused on the navigation, but that's a very interesting application. Um, I would love to hear more, more about it, actually. Maybe in the break. Okay, we'll take one more question. Over here, down here.
No? Okay. So let's keep going. Let's thank our speaker again. Thank you.